Purdue, our presentation today on the Big Ten Television Network. We'll be back to review last week's action of the Big Ten and preview today's when we return to West Lafayette. On natural grass. Well, I'm certainly one in favor of natural grass. I think that's the way football should be played. I don't remember talking to any player that really said they like artificial turf. 65th meeting between Iowa and Purdue. There is Hayden Fry. What a marvelous job he's done in 10 years at Iowa. Hawkeyes registered a 38-14 win over the Boilermakers at Iowa City last year. Since 1980, the series stands at 6-2 in favor of Iowa, including five in a row. Purdue had beaten Iowa 20 consecutive times between 1961 and 1980. And as we mentioned, Purdue will kick off to start the ball game. Fred Akers, longtime Texas head coach, now in his second year here at Purdue. sidelines made the trip over from Iowa City twin safeties back deep for the Iowa Hawkeyes Michael Saunders on the far side and on the near side for Iowa dropping back deep to receive this opening kickoff Peter Marciano Larry Sullivan a redshirt freshman with the approach and we're underway Saunders across the 20. Corey Walden hit him initially, and then he swarmed under. Out across the 25-yard line, Derek Kelson arrived on the scene for Purdue. Starting lineup, there's the Iowa interior line. Jim Poynton returns to the lineup. Greg Divis playing out of position at center in place of the injured Anderson. And the Iowa skill position players, Chuck Harpley, Hartley, of course, leading the conference in passing yardage. David Hudson may also see some action at uh, the tailback spot if Tony Stewart can't go full board here today. Sean Smith, very quick junior college transfer at wide receiver. Hawkeyes on a first and 10. Near the 27. Watkins in motion. Here comes Hudson out of the tailback spot. Hudson close to a first down near the 38-yard line. Foster and Leggett pursued from the secondary and defensive line, respectively. There's the uh, lineup defensively. They also expect on the interior portion of that line to get back Bill Hitchcock today. Gerald Williams, one of the finest linebackers in the Big Ten, and in the secondary, Jackson Beeks, Foster, Kelson, number one of the conference in fewest yards permitted defensively in the passing game. Iowa on a first and ten. Hartley. Lost about two yards on the play. Back to the 36. Ronnie Beek supporting from the defensive secondary. Dennis second and 12 from the 36 of Iowa. Hudson gets a block from Bass. Out to the 45-yard line. About three yards short of the first down. Darren Treve got over to make the stop on the play. Gain of about nine yards. Hartley. Mark Cook. First down to the Boilermaker 46-yard line. Beeks made the stop. Ten-yard gain. You'll notice a very good coverage this time on Cook. You see him isolating number 84 down the field, three, four yards, then an out pattern. You'll see 47 Williams underneath and Beeks coming in to make the tackle. But they just didn't feel, Williams just didn't feel the pattern of Cook very well in the play. Marv Cook last week, 111 yards on nine catches. He has 26 receptions overall this season. John Smith to the bottom of your screen, number 22, good speed, a junior college transfer from El Camino. First down, Iowa, Hudson up the middle. We thought we'd also see Iowa test the middle of the Purdue defense because they've had so many injuries on the interior portion of the defensive line. Gain on. Hudson on a delay. Got a first down inside the 35, and the Hawkeyes are overpowering the Boilermakers at this point. Dennis Dodson made the stop for Purdue. Guys of his Boilermaker defenders. First down from the 34. Hudson again. Trying to spin away inside the 30-yard line. Gain of five or six yards. Tyrone Starks, a linebacker, and Dennis Dotson, a defensive lineman, on the stop for Purdue. Dotson's 
Been a very busy uh, early going here. David Hudson is normally the fullback. He's the man in the down position, but now he is the eye back, and he looks like he really likes the position. Good cutback from right to left there. He may stay back there at tailback. Second and four. Hawkeyes on the drive inside the 30-yard line of Purdue. Chuck Hartley. Lots of time. Cook is the release man. Gerald Williams wraps him up, but not before Marv Cook tiptoes his way for a first down to the 20-yard line. Gerald Williams, Darren Strebe helped out on the tackle. First down for the Hawkeyes. Well, you'll see Hartley looking downfield, looking to the right side. Cannot find a receiver open. Now he goes to the safety valve. Marv Cook staying in the block, staying in the block. Now he releases. He's the safety valve. He looks over to Hartley. Hartley finds him, and they pick up the first down. Talking to former Iowa great Ed Podolak, I asked him, is Cook the best to ever play the position at Iowa? And he says, no question about it. He's one of the best athletes ever to play at Iowa. On the delay, Hudson hit in the backfield, and down he goes. Excellent play by Tyrone Starks, the weak side linebacker, a sophomore out of Las Vegas, Nevada. Loss of a couple of yards. Injured a hip last week against uh, Michigan. Second down and long. Cook is wide open. Beeks denies him a chance at a first down. Stopped five yards short, but at the 15-yard line of Purdue. And Iowa will put it in play with a third down and five coming up. Gain of eight yards. You see how important Marv Cook is to this Iowa offense. Nothing complicated about the pattern. Go five yards down the field and take it out. That time, though, Ronnie Beeks did slip on that turf. The field was not covered. It's a prescription-type turf field, and it's a, one of the best in the Big Ten. It, it has a sand base, and it drains very well. And they did not cover it yesterday afternoon. We had uh, quite a bit of rain here at West Lafayette. Third down and five, Iowa. The blitz is on. Marv Cook makes a great grab for a first and goal at the eight-yard line. Oh, I'll tell you, the coverage from Gerald Williams was right there. Watch it again, Jim. You can't get much better coverage than this on Gerald, on Marv Cook. Gerald Williams, number 47, has him, but great concentration on the football by Marv Cook. Let's look at it. There was no room, really, not much room to catch this football. You see 47 going for the interception, trying to knock the ball loose. Great concentration once again by Marv Cook. On this opening drive, hardly four of four for 33 yards, all four passes to tight end Marv Cook. First and goal, Iowa. Hudson. Good cutback. Touchdown. Dobson and Foster met him on the play, but Marv Cook is one power running back at 6'2 and 235 pounds. David Hudson, again, normally the fullback in the tailback position on this toss to the outside. Good cut back in. Now watch the power. As he gets close to the goal line, look at him drive those Purdue defenders back into the end zone. Jeff Skillet for the point after. And the Iowa Hawkeyes very impressively motor down the field for the initial score of the game. 9.41 left to go. We are first period of play. Uh, answer that beach. 42 yards, get a look at the touchdown run once again. Well, you get a good look at what David Hudson sees. Again, nice cutback. Good leg drive there. He's not going to be stopped. He gets the six. Power back, as I mentioned. Skillet on the kick. Twin safeties back deep, and it's taken by one of the up backs. Cross the 25. Purdue gets good starting position here. That's Ernie Strummeyer, one of the up backs, who made the catch on the kick and motored out to about the... Uh, 39-yard line, Todd Troutman, Derek Schmidt, Bruce Kreitz is the better, and he's the senior in that very young Purdue interior line. And the skill positions, Calvin Williams not expected to start here today due to injury, but we expect to see him play. Scales the uh, top running threat. Trummeyer caught 13 out of the backfield last week, and we have already documented. The linebacking core, they've been banged up a little bit there. Brad Quas is uh, the man to watch in that linebacking core. In the on the offense, first down. 15-yard penalty moves it back from near the 40. Back to the 25-yard uh, line. First and 25. 
First down marker is at the 50-yard line. Iowa showing a blitz, and they come off sides. This will get five of the 15 back if it's against Iowa. Wayne, I noticed that Melvin Foster is in the lineup for Brad Quast at uh, the middle linebacker spot. Legal procedure, the call against style. There is Corey Walden, the injured uh, Boilermaker, young freshman, strong safety. Downfield covering the kick. Dead ball foul, procedure, defense. First Boilermaker. Jared Scales is the tailback. Fox better get rid of it. Kirk nails him. They rule the play dead at the 21-yard line before he gave up the football. Mike Burke, seventh tackle for loss. Wayne, we said that Iowa has to pressure Brian Fox, and you can see they're coming at him right from the start. Number five coming from the off linebacker, Mike Burke, number 97. Joe Mott also coming in on the blitz, and, and Burke gets him from behind. Loss of eight. Second down at 28 for the Boilermakers, who have dug quite a hole for themselves. Scales. Dave Haight wrapped him up in the middle of the line. He did well to get back to the line of scrimmage, where it's third down and about a mile. <laughs> Scales had no chance. Haight was standing there saying, come on, I got you. Okay. No gain. Third and 28 for the Boilermakers. Okay. I on the shovel for Scales. Not much there. Maybe three yards to the 25. Melvin Foster, the sophomore out of Houston, Texas, made the stop for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Well, you show the pass has to be fake. You have to fake that sprint out to the left a little more. He turned it up too soon. Running, averages 40.6 yards a kick. It's off of beauty here. Marciano from the 25. Barrow makes the stop and Iowa will start short of the 30 yard line in Hawkeye territory. 7.32 to go. Iowa on the board early to play Iowa for the second time this afternoon gets the football offensively. I hope that is not an omen of things to come. <laughs> the Boilermaker is uh, in a little bit of trouble. That first offensive drive, not the best. Not the best way to start either. That's the big fullback Bass. Richard Bass getting the call and not much there. The mid portion of the line, Kushner and Tyrone start here today, but it's to the perimeter. Hit at the 30, but look at him drive forward again out to the 31-yard line. Darren Tree, the young middle linebacker, made the stop, a sophomore, along with Ronnie Beeks, the strong safety. Get another look at it from the end zone view. Well, Purdue plays this so much better this time. You'll see Tree fill in the middle. Ronnie Beeks, number three, no plays for Hudson to run, and they ran it to the short side of the field, so they couldn't take it outside either. Hartley. That one overthrown, and set it for Devin Harbert, and the coverage provided by Derek Kelson, who forced him out of real estate in the near the coverage. Mark Adams out in punt formation for Iowa. A very short punt. Mark Foster lets it go, and it takes a boy to make a roll. First and 10, Purdue, in decent field position. Just a 31-yard punt, and the Boilers will start from their 38-yard line. We'll return after these words from your local station. That's Calvin Williams right there. 19 receptions, a 13-yard average. pass coming up from Miles. No go. Melvin Foster, the linebacker, wouldn't buy it. Loss of yardage back inside the 30-yard line. Iowa wants to pressure the quarterback and wants to cut again. They come with the blitz, this time from the inside. That's 66. Melvin Foster, no one touches him. He comes in, makes the tackle, and Miles had no chance to get the ball off. Loss of 10, second and 20 coming up. There's Melvin Foster. Iowa gets such great penetration, even against Michigan's big front wall last week. Joe Mott was just living in Bo Schembecker's uh, backfield. Second down and long. Fox. Keppel on the 
pursuit. Fox let it go wisely out of play. The third and long situation for Brian Fox. Brummeyer is the lone setback. Scales in motion. Drummeyer. Penalty markers all over the play. Drummeyer is about 10 yards short of the first down on a gain of 10. Melvin Foster made the stop. Here the 39-yard line of Purdue, and again, McCarthy comes out of fun formation. We saw Purdue the second week of the season. Actually, their opener, John McCarthy, was the quarterback that day. Good leverage into this kick. That's Marciano, number 26 for Iowa. Decked immediately on the play. Great coverage. Bruce Price downfield for Purdue. 44-yard body lost two on the return. 439 left to go. Iowa's offense appears for the third time in this first period of play. All at their 15-yard line. Hudson, the long setback. That's Marv Cook, number 84. Now they move Bass into the offensive backfield behind Hartley. Hudson. Beats made the initial hit for the Boilermakers. Had some help coming in. Ken Kushner on the play. Ken Cock was also there. Good, jo good job by Purdue. Just forcing it back inside. Taking everything down inside so he could back would have to come outside. Iowa defensive huddle on the sidelines between plays. Stewart. Tony Stewart for the first time today lost the football, but they had whistled the play dead across the 25-yard line where the Hawkeyes have a first down. Gerald Williams made the hit for the Boilermakers. Concern over the tackling of Purdue. The Boilermakers have been inconsistent in their tackling this year. Hartley on play action. Penalty markers are down. Hartley off the mark on the pass to Stewart. Well, they're going to call Iowa for holding. I think the official was calling Bob Cratch, the left tackle. And Donzel Lega turned around and said, you're right, he got me. This will force. And of course, yep. and of course they incur the wrath of the crowd <laughs> for correcting the mistake. Fred Akers certainly was on the field yelling at the officials. Now Let's say, get the rules straight. It's not that you make a mistake, it's that you go ahead and correct it. Good Lord, we all make mistakes. 16-yard line. Hawkeye shifting offensively. Bass is the lone setback now behind Hartley. Bill Hitchcock in pursuit. Broken up nicely on the play. Pass intended for Marv Cook, and that was Ronnie Beeks all the way. On the coverage. Well, good... Good protection initially for Hartley. If you see he has time, if the ball's thrown on timing, right there, boom, he should throw it. All right, can't find a receiver, Roper. Now he's running for his life under the pressure. Now Marv Cook reacts well to this. He turns it back upfield. He sees Hartley under pressure, turns it upfield, but a good job by Beeks is staying with Marv Cook. But boy, that was a well-thrown football. That sure Look was. Right into the hands of Marv Cook. And Beeks got a piece of it right between Cook's hands. Good throw by Chuck Hartley under great pressure. Second and 20, Iowa. The pressure. Gerald Williams. We're going to show you some of them a little bit later on. They're just beautiful. Third and long. Dropped on the play by Bass. It is a fourth down, and the Hawkeyes will punt from their end zone. I leave his average is about 37 yards a kick. Mark Foster in single safety. Just did get it away. The kicker went down. I don't see a flag. Picked up by Foster. Foster down the sideline. Oh, they say he stepped out of the 24. Purdue will get it on a first down near the 24-yard line. Nick Bell and John Palmer forced him out of play. Let's watch the punt again. Let's see if anybody gets a piece of the football. No, I don't think anybody did. It was just a not a very well-putted football. And a good fake. 
by the punter. Now watch the fake here by Foster. He looked like he was going to let the ball just go. Then he picks it up, breaks a couple tackles. There he then steps right out of bounds right there. But a great play, great field position for Purdue. First and 10 of the Hawkeye 24. Grand trying to pick his way for about two or three yards. Ray Graham, a young... wrapped him up after a 13-yard gain. That's where they want to see Ray Graham into the secondary. You'll see some fine blocking out in front. Number 34. Goal just outside the Hawkeye 9 for the Boilermakers. Graham again. This time he stutter stepped and slipped and dove back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe got a yard to the 8-yard line. David Haight was right there. You slip a little bit against this Iowa interior front. They'll make you pay the... Graham again. This time he stutter stepped and slipped and dove back to the line of scrimmage. Bottom of your screen, a wide receiver. The scales on the wing. Box to the air. Under pressure from Jensen. Touchdown, Strumbeyer! Completely fooled the throw. Season. Lance Shive, the holder. And the Purdue Boilermakers have caught the Iowa Hawkeyes with 15 seconds left to go in this first period of play. Watch it. Just a gorgeous afternoon here in West Lafayette. The colors are vibrant. We came in yesterday, it was kind of rainy and foggy, and it broke crisp and clear this morning. Absolutely a beautiful day for football today. You can just see the, the sun just glistening off of those trees. And you know, Wayne, it looked like a different Purdue defense the last two series, it did. didn't it? It really did. Bill Bennett has made some adjustments in that defense, and they're fired up. They're playing well. Sullivan's kick to Saunders at the five. Short of the 25. Saunders on the return to about the 23-yard line. Brad Davis, good coverage for Purdue. That was Just a nice job. Derek by, Kelson. Nice job by Brad Davis. He slipped that blocker out to make the tackle. Special breed of guys. Quarterback Chuck Hartley. Watkins in motion. Stewart. Hit by Creed. Got two yards to the 25-yard line. First period comes to a close at the end of one quarter complete. Up at seven apiece and we'll return to Ross A Stadium after this from your local station. This is the Big Ten Television Network. Part of the campus here in West Lafayette. Beautiful color. Just a great day for football, college football in the Big Ten country. Yeah, who said New England had a, a corner on fall colors? Boy, we've got some nice color here in Indiana. Balloon to the top of your screen. Harvard to the bottom, and there is Chuck Hartley. On a second down, he goes to the shotgun, second and eight. All of his completions have been to Marv Cook, the tight end. Through the hands of Harberts, who had a step on the coverage on the near side. Steve Jackson was there. That ball should have been caught by Harberts. It was a well-thrown football. Rushing yardage, big difference there. Total yards, time of possession, all heavily in favor of Iowa. Everything except the... You'll see Harberts on an out move. Ball thrown a little high, but that's a catchable football and should have been caught. Now that's the third ball that's been dropped on Chuck Hartley. Third down, eight yards. This time, Harbert latches on for a first down, and Kelson escorts him to the chalk marks on the far side near the 37-yard line. It is a 13-yard gain to a Hawkeye first down, and I believe that's their initial first down since the first drive of the game. I believe you're right, and that is the first reception 
to a man other than Marv Cook. Let's look at the coverage. Purdue plays basically a man for man, and you'll see him matched up. Number two, Kelson on Harvard, and Foster on, on Watkins. Good move by Harvard to the outside. A little loose coverage there by Kelson. First down, Hartley on the roll. The sidearm to Travis Watkins, who tries to spin away. And he may have picked up the first down of that little spin move. Ronnie Beek was there, gain of 11 yards. It should be a first down, Iowa. Wayne, same play to the other side. Of the and wide receiver. Penalty markers all over the play. Penalty flags on the play. Illegal, Illegal procedure, procedure, offense. Illegal procedure, the call out against Iowa. Guys, face of first and 15 now. Back at the 43-yard line in Iowa territory. Fred Akers looks on. I'll tell you what, you're going to start seeing the full effects of his first couple of recruiting classes, which were among the best in the nation. You're seeing a little bit of that now, but you're going to see a lot more of it next year and the year after. Earlier than he wants to see it. Hartley being pressured. Didn't get rid of the ball and is sacked back inside the 40-yard line. Dennis Dodson and Carol Williams arrive and meet at the quarterback. You know, it looked to me right on this play that Hartley had the man open, but he figured that he better protect himself. You'll see him right here. Now he feels the pressure right there. He goes, he pulls it down, protect yourself. I'm going to get nailed, and he does. He just didn't want to take the clean shot to an exposed ribcage. Each team. Travis Watkins. Well, I tell you, he had a lot of cushion in the coverage of the Steve Jackson that time. Gain of yardage out to the 45, where it'll be a third down and about 12 and a half to 13 yards to go to that first. His right ankle, it might be. Third down. Travis Watkins denied the first down by Derek Kelson at the Purdue 45-yard line, and the Hawkeyes will be forced to punt on fourth down at two and a half yards to go. Good stick by the DB. It, it was a good stick by, by the defensive back, but Watkins really should have run a deeper pattern. You got to get the pattern deep enough to get the first down. He ran a six-yard out instead of a nine-yard out that would have given him the first down. Fourth down now for the Hawkeyes. Mark Adams on in front formation. Mark Foster back deep for the Boilermakers. Here to try to kick for the corner that he has. Stayed in play, taking a Purdue hop back to the 10-yard line, but nonetheless, Iowa got the kind of roll they wanted. And they pin the Boilermakers back to the 10-yard line. 34-yard punt, no return. Purdue's offensive drive will begin from the Boiler 10. We're tied in the second period. Today's game for the announcement of the Valvoline Big Ten High Performance Player of the Week. Valvoline will be donating $1,000 to the general scholarship funds of the Big Ten University. The Valvoline Big Ten High Performance Player of the Week. A big man in Iowa playing to the outset of today's game. David Hudson has scored the Iowa touchdown is leaving with what appears to be an ankle injury. Nine carries, 48 yards at a touchdown, all in the first period of play. And that is probably one of the major reasons why Iowa's changed and gone to more of a passing game here. Tony Stewart has also uh, been nicked up, although he's played a little bit here today. You see that field position certainly in the favor of Purdue. Gales the tail of the tandem on a first down for the Boilermakers. They've got it marked out of the 12-yard line. That's Williams in motion. Scales. Joe Mott arrived initially to make a hit on the play for Iowa. Keppel is the man they tried to run over, and he's on the bottom. Box on the play action. Pass well off the mark. I'll tell you, once again, Jim Johnson coming right up the middle of the Iowa defensive tackle. Put all kinds of heat on the young quarterback. Fox couldn't get anything on the football because they were spinning off the block of Segelsi right there. Triple team. <laughs> they can Iowa Hawkeyes right in the face. Well, look number 64, Tate. Spinning off the block of Segelsi right there. Triple team. <laughs> they kept hate out of it. But it was Jimmy Johnson in the face of Brian Fox. When you double and triple team someone on the defensive line, another uh, teammate breaks wide open, and that's what happened. Third down and eight 
for Purdue. Fox. Dumped it off. Joe Mott was bearing in inside the five-yard line of Purdue. So the Iowa defense reasserts itself, and the Boilermakers will be forced to punt on third and eight. That play showed you why Joe Mott leads the league in sacks and tackles for loss. Brian Fox just able to get the ball off to prevent the eighth sack by Joe Mott. Mott leads the Big Ten of tackles for loss with 16, and the record is 20, so he's got a shot at that record. Adams in punt formation. I think that's Sean McCarthy. Got a low snap and no pressure. The Hawkeyes setting up for a return. Marciano. I thought he took it on one knee, but apparently not. 38-yard punt, virtually no return. Andy Gaspero was there. Let's see if he dips down to one knee. He does. Check it out right there. Ooh, that should, play is over at that point right there. <laughs> Matter of fact, the officials have changed the position of the ball. They mark it to the 48-yard line where he went down. We've got a break of the action. We'll be back. Back after these messages out of the game. Watkins in motion to the near side. First down for Hart leaving company. Stewart. To the 50 and no farther. Dennis Dotson again in on the stop. Jim Grabowski, he has had a busy first half of play. Certainly has. Dennis Dotson is not normally a starter, but he's getting... Stewart. Donzel Leggett got a piece of him. Stewart bounced ahead for an extra three or four yards down to the Purdue 46 or 47 yard line. Purdue is doing so much better of a job. Third down. Hartley. Watkins on a diving cry. Steve Jackson had the coverage downfield, and there was some pressure in the offensive backfield. Big Bill Hitchcock bearing in on the quarterback along with Ken Kushner. It looked like Hartley. Foster back deep to receive this punt from Mark Adams. Adams going for the far side. Fair catch signal made. And the ball skips into the end zone. Purdue will take it from the 20-yard line with 9.58 left to go. First half of play when we resume. Today's game is being brought to you with what appears to be an ankle injury. First down for the Boilermakers from the 20. Williams in motion. Jarrett Scales. Keppel out in front of the play, turned it back in. Mike Burke arrived on the scene along with Dave Hayes. Loss of yardage back inside the 20 to the 18-yard line, second and 12 coming up. Boy, fine job by Keppel, forcing himself out to the outside, beating the blocker, getting the penetration. You know, Iowa does such a great job of penetrating, penetrating that line of scrimmage. Fox has faced a lot of second and long situations. He's second and 12 here. Again, Williams, the motion man. Fullback Strummeyer got back to the 20-yard line, a gain of two, where it'll be a third down of 10 yards to go. Melvin Foster in the hole. The linebacker made the stop on the play. Strummeyer, perhaps the strongest offensive player as far as skill position people are concerned. They're over three and third down. Premature movement of the offensive line before the snap, and the penalty markers hold up the action. So this will make it third down and a little bit longer. Four tackles are freshmen. 15. Tried to bust it up the middle, and uh, the Iowa defense stayed at home. Riley in the hole met Strummeyer, and he went virtually nowhere. Eight of two, third, fourth down and long. Foster was also there. Well, Purdue's trying to cross him up. They think maybe Iowa will be looking for the pass. They come with a little... That's a, really a... A play where the guard is pulled, hoping that the tackle will just follow them and there'll be a big hole. They don't really block anybody in the middle, and it's really hoped that they fool them up the middle and didn't work. Marciano back deep. Oh, McCarthy just did get it away, but he got away a beauty. Marciano from the 20, from the 34. Caught from behind on the play by 
Andy Gasper over the man who initially got to him, Eric Krabbe, a freshman from their 39-yard line. Double tight ends in the ball game now for Iowa, both in the stand-up position. Hartley with plenty of time. Just threw it away at the feet of the intended receiver, Tom Ward. Make that to John Palmer, the tight end. Well, you know, I think Purdue had, I mean, Iowa had the matchup they wanted one-on-one. -on -one. You'll see on Cook, they're double covering all the time. Underneath with the linebacker, on top with the strong safety. You see the wrap of coverage here? He's working for it, working to get open, but they just had him too well covered. Actually, though, Hartley really had Watkins on a post pattern one-on-one, -on -one, had him open. Second and ten. Bang. Not much there. Gain up two to the 41-yard line. Brian Madden made the stop. A young freshman out of Indianapolis, Indiana. About seven and a half yards to go. Blitz is on. Intended for Watkins, who was well covered down the sideline by Jackson. Flag on the play, Wayne. Tyrone Starks on the pass rush pressure for Purdue. Penalty marker down near the 38-yard line of the Boilermakers downfield. And it's against Purdue. Iowa's been running all the out patterns, and it, you figured pretty soon they were going to go with the out and up. They did it that time. Jackson had pretty good coverage, but he must have had his hands all over Watkins because they called the penalty against Purdue. Pass interference. Boilermaker folks on the sideline. Fred Akers, Bill Bennett, they debate the case of the no avail at the first down. For the Hawkeyes, and now they're in Purdue territory at the 43-yard line. Big play for Iowa and a bad one for Purdue. They had them stop. Look like their defense is really playing well. Let's see if that play really gives Iowa some momentum. Bill Bennett said we'll have to play one of our best defensive uh, performances ever to beat Iowa. On the delay, Stewart. Darren Freeb wrapped him up, but not before. Stewart voted for close to 10 yards. Ronnie Beek supported for the secondary. A draw to the weak side. They've been running mostly strong side. Now they come with the draw back to the weak side. You see the linebackers stay in position, but good blocks out in front by Bass, 23, and by the center on Darren Freed. Freed gets off the block finally to make the tackle, but good blocking out in front for, by the Hawkeyes. Gain of nine. New head coach Fred Akers looks on as his defense tries to stop. A second down and short guarded situation. Down and more pulling his way inside the 30 yard line. Gain of about five yards. Mark Foster arrived on the scene for Purdue with help from his friends. You'll see a lot of time in that backfield. Nick Bell, a freshman, is also in the offensive backfield for Iowa. A sophomore Nick Bell. Hartley on first down. Tried to sign arm it for Bell. Pass off the mark. Boilermakers have been able to bring some pressure. Conover and Leggett were in the offensive backfield on pass rush. Williams had the coverage downfield on the running back. Hartley. Bell is wide right open to the Boilermakers' three-yard line. Nelson forced him out at first and goal on a 25-yard gain. You'll see Travis Watkins going deep on an out pattern, and underneath, number 43, Nick Bell, wide open. Look at both receivers look open. Now, what happened is the linebackers got fooled. They did not expect the deep corner right, route by the running back. Play action held the throws the linebackers, and that opened up Nick Bell in the secondary. First and goal just outside the board of Akers three for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Power high formation. Hartley on the give to Bass. Good read by the Boilermaker defense. Darren Creed for Spade, and they reacted well back to basketball for him. Second and goal. Stewart. Kirchner makes the hit. Got back to the five, maybe just inside the five-yard line, where it's third and goal for Iowa. When your opponents are threatening your own goal line, 
Defensively, you want penetration, and Purdue had it there. Buttermakers want a timeout. Purdue takes a defensive timeout here. With 4.24 left to go, first half of play. For Iowa. that they were going to go to Cook on that play. The big, strong guy at 6'4", matched up with Ronnie Beeks. Let's take a look right there, 84 under your picture, down the field, hardly booking to him all the way, and that may have been one of the problems. You saw again, once again, the sidearm pass by Hartley, just off the fingertip of Byron Cook. 22-yard field goal attempt. Gillett puts Iowa back on top with 4.15 to go, first half of play. The Hawkeyes on a 22-yard field goal lead the Boilermakers by the score of 10 to 7, but certainly some solace to be taken from that sequence of plays by Purdue. They gave up a couple of big plays, especially the pass. Much easier to move the ball down. Elvin Williams, who does a lot of the kick returning, my ass. is uh, seeing some Limited duty here today, but not returning kicks. Jeff Skillet will kick off for Iowa. Skillet Brand getting set to kick it away. along with Peter Marciano and John Derby. It is the first down of the 28-yard line for the Purdue Bonnemann. Now that's the way you're supposed to 17-year-old Brian Fox at the control. His receiver fell down on the plate. Todd Moore lost his footing underneath the coverage of Keaton Smiley. I think we've got it in isolation. Let's take a look. We're going to have a good shot at right there. That's Todd Moore turning to the outside to watch him slip right here a little well, he slips right there now watch the ball's right in his hands mm. could have been a reception last time Purdue beat Ohio State in Columbus was 1967 a little more than three years later on December 23rd 1970 Brian Fox the quarterback current quarterback of the Watermakers was born <laughs> 17 years later and just his uh, third game his third collegiate start he rallied the Watermakers to victory last week on the carry. Mask. There it is. Face mask against Iowa. Five yard face mask penalty. That's number 71. Jimmy Johnson coming from the offside. Let's see if we can see him. There it is. Five yard face see him mask. Grab the face defense. mask. Rip the head back. And that's why it's a big penalty. And why it is a penalty is you can really get injured when a defender grabs that face mask and rips your neck back. If it's malicious, they mark off 15. If it's incidental or not done on purpose, so to speak, uh, and that's an interpretation by the official, it's a five-yard penalty. They tack five yards onto the end of the run. If you're the ball carrier, they're all malicious. <laughs> I thought you were going to say that. <laughs> Spoken like a former fullback. Seconds out and short for Purdue. Guys jumped on the line. Scales didn't need much to get the first down. First down, Watermakers at the Purdue 39. Box to the air. That's underthrown, intended in the flat for Scales. Box felt some pressure. He was in a tight pocket, but it looked the ground it appears today. Iowa's did a good job of snuffing out the run. Second and ten. Fox on an option. He was going down by the time the linebacker Jim Riley got over to him. Gains in enough foot speed to make him a threat on the option. Purdue 0 for 4 and third down. They face a third and six. Runmeyer was wide open. 
look at his reaction. That tells all. It was a great call against the defense. Iowa came again. Schrummeyer, you'll see him slip out of backfield. A little touch block out on Mott, looking wide open, and the ball right there. And uh, you know how bad he feels right now. Sometimes the worst place to hit you fullbacks with a pass is right in the hands, Jim. You fullback. Had great hands. <laughs> McCarthy's had a good day. Marciano. Plays this on the hop. And he paid the price. Takes some courage to be a punt returner. Gasparro, Dwayne O'Connor were there. 36. Got Hawkeyes with 2.15 to go in the half. Lots of time. Marv Cook couldn't quite catch up with it. Well, I'll tell you, Ronnie Beeks is just going to get worn out here today because Marv Cook is going to be running pattern after pattern, and Hartley looked to him on almost every play. Iowa had the matchup they wanted, one-on-one, -on -one, Beeks and Cook. You see the play right here. If he does anything wrong right now, he doesn't drive Beeks off a little more before he makes his move to the outside. But he did get open. Ball was thrown just off his fingertip. Second and ten. Donzel Leggett. Purdue came with a stunt. Tackle and stunt. Tackle goes to the outside. The end loops back into the inside. Let's see if we can pick it up. Watch the right, the top of your screen. Tackle going the outside. Leggett, number 41, coming back to the inside. Got a free shot on Hartley. Hartley feels it. He really goes down. Loss of nine. It is third and 19. Hawkeyes at the Iowa 13-yard line. Hartley going deep. Watkins is there. What a play by Jensen. Steve Jackson on the deflection. That really was an excellent play by Jackson. Adams tanks it a bit to the near side and it takes a Purdue hop. <laughs> First down, Boilermakers on the field inside the Iowa 35. It was an alert play by the Iowa Hawk, I mean by the Boilermaker, but I'll tell you what, I'm sure the coach's heart stopped a little bit. That was not normally... Second time Purdue has started a drive inside Iowa territory here this afternoon. He fumbled the snap. I believe Fox got it back. Third down for the Boilermaker at the Hawkeye 32. But it was 0 for 5 in third down situation. Miles unable to hang on that time. Darren Miles had a seam in the defense. Again, great play calls. They got what they wanted to get. A one-on-one -on -one matchup. Miles on the outside linebacker. He got open. The ball was there. They just didn't hang on to it. Let's take a look. Miles, 33, right on your right side. Comes out, has the linebacker, one-on-one. -on -one. Look, he's open. Ball right there. Should have been caught. 50-yard field goal attempt coming up right here by Larry Sullivan. His long is 49. He hit a 49-yarder. John McCarthy on a punt formation. Trying to pooch it to the far side, and it just does catch the end zone. It's all to be a first down for the Iowa Hawkeyes out of the 20-yard line. Crowd not too happy with that decision. No, they wanted, uh, they wanted to go for the field, field goal. goal try. I'm sure what happened on the timeout, they went over the talk, said, hey, can you make it? I don't know, that's right at the top of my distance. And he was going against the wind, I might add, with that kick. Fred Akers thought better of it and decided to bring on the punt unit. It would have been a kick into the wind. Again, five to 10 miles, what the wind was expected to be. 
here today. So Iowa, with three timeouts remaining and 44 seconds left to go, will give it a try, 80 yards away. Bell is the fullback. Stewart the tailback. Hartley on play action. Trying to hit Bell, and the pass was underthrown. A penalty marker down in the offensive backfield. Maybe for holding against Iowa. Seems like Chuck Hartley, but more occasions than not, is off balance with these sidearm throws and isn't getting a whole lot on the football. Wayne, he's not throwing the ball as well as we've seen earlier in the year. And part of the reason, as you said, he is not stepping and throwing. Holding that time, he offense. had the time to step and throw the football. A quarterback will feel, I guess he'll, if he's been sacked a couple of times, he'll sometimes feel pressure that isn't quite there. We can see a lot easier from up here. Quarterback feels pressure one way or the other. Hartley is 9 of 19, 101 yards passing. He's a much better percentage passer than that. Going into the game, he's averaged over 62% passing. First and 20 for the Hawkeyes. marker down foster the final man to hit him on the play looked like he was met initially on the line by tyrone starts and i'm wondering if he may have grazed the face mask a little bit that's what they're going to call i believe tyrone starts for grabbing the face mask it was a high tackle attempt and it appeared to be an incidental face mask penalty hartley has completed only one of his last seven passing mm. attempts Iowa now on a first down at about uh, 15 yards to go. Make that a first and 14 yards to go as it's spotted down. Should be a first and 15. Hartley. Devin Harbert steps out of bounds. About a yard short of that first down. Kelson forced him out. He stops the clock with 20 seconds to go. Well, Kelson knows what the time is on the scoreboard. He's going to give him that eight yard out. Just don't want to be burned on an out and down. Second down, and Market is two yards short of that first down. Second down, about two yards to go. Time winding down, first half. Marv Cook got his fingertips on it, couldn't haul it in, and again we saw the sidearm motion. Ronnie Beeks had the coverage of the near side. What a battle between Cook and Beeks. Purdue is almost always in a man-for-man -man defense, so we're going to see that matchup all afternoon. Third down now, and about two and a half yards to go to that first down. 16 seconds to go of the half. Iowa still with three timeouts remaining. Hartley going deep. Intended for John Falone. Derek Kelson right with him on the coverage. It's fourth down Iowa with 10 seconds to go in the half. Well, you see number 82, John Falloon. It looks to me like he almost pushed off on Derek Kelson. See what the Hawkeyes try here. No question they'll go ahead and punt it. Although the offense stayed on the field a few minutes longer. I was thinking, what's Hayden Fry thinking now? Whoa. No, Hayden didn't do no, that. No, 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 no. Aiden Fry is too good a coach to try a move like that. Going for it on fourth down deep in your own territory. <laughs> Adams gets the Late shove away. is about the only thing I could pick up on the far side. Well, let's see what the official says. I believe you're right, Wayne. Personal foul against the Iowa Hawkeyes. Let's see if we can pick it up here. That's Graham going to the outside. Tripping. He's going outside. No. Oh, that's Gillett. The kicker gets the hit out of bounds. Off the penalty. The Boilermakers start the first drive of the second half at the midfield marker. Moore at the top of your screen. Calvin Williams to the bottom. Now out of the picture. They are the wide receivers. Little in the middle of the line. Mike 
Burke arrived from his defensive end position, along with Jeff Keppel on the interior portion of the line, second down and eight. Quarterback comparison through one half of play. Quite a difference there, though Hartley not having, like we say, as sharp a day throwing the football as we've been used to seeing him, but he has been victimized by a couple of drop passes, and give Purdue some credit. There are the drop passes, give Purdue some credit. They put some pressure on Hartley. Second down and eight. is short of the first down. He was stuck right away by Mike Burke, leaving a third down and about three yards to go. I think Purdue's going to have to do more of that. The short pattern underneath the linebackers. Their running game, which they hoped was going to be effective, has not been so far in this game. And so you got against this Iowa defense. Third down. Iowa on a blitz. This is the best hole that Scales has seen all afternoon. It's a great shot coming right at you. Good hole right there. And Scales finds it. And it's Burton Hanks coming on his tackle and another one of those Iowa ones that couldn't pick up. Second and four. when we said that we don't think uh, uh, Purdue can run against this Iowa team. They're coming up with two good holes. This time, back to the fullback, Crumbrier. Sees the hole back to the inside. Good cut. Now there's Melvin Foster, the 66, coming in to help Burton Hanks on the tackle. But good effort there by Strummeyer. First and goal, Boilermakers at the Hawkeye 5. Crumbrier hit by Dave Hayes. A loss of yardage back outside the five to the eight-yard line. Dave Hayes. Five in the second half. Second a goal to go from the eight. Fox. Throw it away. Keppel, it looked like, was going to knock him down, but Fox made a little bit of a sidestep to get past Keppel and let the pass go and threw it away out of play. Very good poise. Third and goal to go from the Iowa 8. Scales. Touchdown saving tackle by Brown. Scales made the wrong move. If he 
Hook it back inside. He had the stick. Let's take a look at it now. On the latest scales, out of the backfield, drop back pattern by Brian Fox, looking to his right. Good job of looking off. Now he goes back to scales all alone. Now let's watch it here. If he takes it right there upfield, he would have got the six. He takes it back to the outside, but he gets the first down. It is fourth down, and the Boilermakers are going to go for it. from Johnson and the Hawkeye defense has held <laughs> Iowa will take over back inside their five yard line 9.56 to go third period the Boilermakers drove to the doorstep we'll be back after these from your local station Goal line on a goal to go situation. The uh, the Boilermakers went for it. Two yards is, is a long way to go when you're going into the end zone. And there's a big gamble by Fred Akers. Bell in motion. Stewart gets the call and he's knocked down by Fox near the three yard line. Gain of about a yard. Darren Creed, the linebacker, arrived initially on the scene. Iowa leading by three. Across the five, short of the first down, of course. He's out to the uh, seven-yard line. Still about five yards short. Ronnie Beeks on the tackle for Purdue. Well, this is a play that will decide whether it was a good gamble or not. Now at the Hawkeye seven. Stewart did not get it. Dennis Dotson helped to close the hole for Purdue. Defensively, and the Hawkeyes are two yards short of the first down. Tony Stewart on three runs got eight yards. Now, if Hayden Fry comes out and goes for it on yeah, fourth down, <laughs> all right. So far, the first equation in that gamble worked in that the defense has forced Iowa to punt with the line of scrimmage of the Hawkeye 10. Mark Adams out in punt formation. Short kick, takes a Purdue bounce, covered by Burks inside the 35. 22-yard punt. First down coming up. The Boilermakers will start near the Iowa 32-yard line when we resume. Third Purdue drive to start in Iowa territory this afternoon. They start at the 32 on a first and 10. Hawkeye showed a blitz. Here it comes. Fox kind of held that football out there a little bit. Thought he might get it knocked away. Joe Mock came up to make the hit. Foster, I believe, is the man. Melton Foster. scrimmage. Jim Johnson arrived. Mike Burke and Dave Haight were also there. Iowa leading 10-7 here. Notre Dame having a tough time. Seven minutes to go. Third period. Box to the air. Intercepted by Brian Wise. to the 33-yard line. First down, Iowa Hawkeyes. Wayne, the Hawkeyes came with a safety up zone. That's Ryan Wise in the short, flat area. Ryan Fox just never seven. You saw 15 right there. He's reading. Ryan Fox comes in the underneath coverage right in his arms. Big interception for Iowa. Let's take another look. You'll see Ryan Fox you see the man open on this side that that's more or scribe on the other side that's where fox should have gone to back live stewart for about three yards to the 36 yard line darren creve on the tackle along with tyrone stark 
for the Boilermakers. Second and seven for Iowa coming up. Iowa defense, well, the uh, Purdue defense stopped Iowa. The second part of the equation is to get a short punt, good field position. The third part is to go in and score. Purdue unable to score on that drive. Hartley led the intended receiver, Devin Har Harbert, a bit too much. Steve Jackson on the coverage in the far side, and Iowa faces a third and seven. Wayne, I just don't remember Chuck Hartley throwing such sidearm passes that time. He certainly could have gone over the top. It was another sidearm, and he hasn't been very effective on his sprint out uh, passes. We saw it on something you've got to think about, I guess, at that point. Third down. Leaping grab by Harberts did not come down in play. Eric Kelson. And Mark Foster used the sideline as a third defender. I'll tell you what, that's a great job by Harbert. Although he did not come down with the reception, he was out of bounds, but he fights for that ball. Look at Mark Foster, almost comes up with the interception, and that was just a great job by Harbert. The beat never got down. One formation, Mark Adams has had a tough day. Gets good leverage into this kick, Foster. Bobbles for a moment and kind of squirms ahead for a yard or two. Keaton Smiley made the stop on the play. 31-yard punt, two-yard return. We have 5.57 to go in the third. Iowa still leading by the halftime count. 10 to 7. Back up to the east from your local state. First and 10 Purdue near the Boilermaker 36. Fox. To the 43-yard line of Iowa. First down, Purdue, on a 21-yard gain. Greg Brown on the tackle along with Brad Quast. It's the play action. 13 reception, 11.5 average. You can see right there, Brad Quast, 35, was in coverage, but... Back live, Jarrett Scales for about a yard. I believe that's... Is that David Hudson? David Hudson on the sideline. Pull back for the Iowa Hawkeye. Ankle problem, perhaps. He scored the first touchdown, the only Iowa touchdown of the ball game. That was the first reception for any Purdue receiver outside of a running back. Second and nine. too high for Schrummeyer and a third and nine coming up for Purdue Fox using the play action and then rolling to third and nine Hawkeyes were coming across in a hurry and whistles hold up the action I believe there might have been some premature movement on the offensive line well you can get awfully angry at you and I believe that's what happened. Mott was showing that he was coming with the blitz. Delay of game. Oh, delay of game. Didn't get it off in time. Well, I'd still be a little uh, edgy if I saw Mott. <laughs> Here's Green. That's Calvin Williams. Box to the air. In a tight pocket. Back inside. The Purdue 45-yard line. The quarterback goes down to the arms of Jim Johnson, who's been pressuring all afternoon. Melvin Foster came in from the linebacking corps. Wayne, this Iowa team leads the Big Ten in sacks with 22. Coming into the game, three of the top sackmen in the Big Ten were from Iowa. Three of the top five guys. McCarthy hits it high, not very deep. Fair catch signal is made, and the catch completed by John Falloon. The up back, 22-yard punt. No return from the 31. Iowa will put it in play in their own territory. Hawkeyes with 4.01 to go in the third. Play on the lead. Area of the season where third period, no one has scored yet. Stewart has some running room. Into Boilermaker territory to the 44-yard line. Steve Jackson made the stop. 25-yard gain. The longest rushing attempt for Iowa this afternoon. And the reason is good blocking up front. Look at the handoff now to 21, Tony Short. Look at the hole on the right side. Good seal inside. Little cut to the right, cut to the left. Good dance there by Tony Stewart. Now back upfield. And it takes 
the cornerback, the safety, to make the tackle. Stewart again for another first down. This one inside the 30-yard line of Purdue. Over to make the tackle, Steve Jackson, Jackson, Jackson once again, along with Mark Foster, 15-yard pickup to the first down at the 28-yard line. You almost feel like they've been holding this play off. Yep. It's their secret weapon play. Just an off-tackle run by Stewart. He has a painful hip, uh, kind of a hip pointer suffered in the Michigan game. So Tony Stewart has to come out and suck it up and play hard. And that's what he's doing here in the second half. On the delay to Stewart. This time they snuff it out. Loss of yardage back to the 30. Darren Creeve on the tackle along with Ken Kushner. Loss of two, second and 12, Iowa. David Hudson injured earlier in this ball game. He was going to figure prominently in the Iowa offensive plans here today. In that first drive, he rushed for the touchdown. Second down, a little bit less than 12 yards to go. Hartley. Knocked down in the middle of the line. Looked like he was trying to slant to the near side. Donzel Leggett got the arm to the air and knocked it down. Hartley was going to go to Devin Harbert. He had him open. And lucky for Purdue, let's see if we could see this deflection right here at the line of scrimmage. There it is. That's Leggett knocking the ball down. It would have been a reception, I believe, because Harbert was open. And our spotter, Tom Sean caught it without a replay. Purdue showing a blitz up front. Third down. Marv Cook does not get the first down. At the 25-yard line, Ronnie Beeks made the stop. And I dare say that's Cook's first reception since the first quarter. I believe you're right, Wayne. Again, it's a matchup of Beeks and Cook. You see the little push-off by Cook. A little slip by Beeks allows Cook to get open, but Beeks reacts well back to it and stops him with only a four-yard gain. It is fourth down. Seven yards to go, and the Hawkeyes are going for it. on a sensational grab off the turf. Derek Kelson had the coverage, 13-yard gain to an Iowa first down. You're going to see an excellent catch by Harbert. Look at the ball, is thrown low. It looked like it may have been tipped partially. No, it's not. Just a good grab by Harbert going to his knees, and really, again, pretty good coverage there. Almost off the blade of grass came up with the football. Hawkeye's chip. First down. Pass to the outside, hit by Gerald Williams, and taken out of play on the far side by Ronnie B. Excellent play by Williams. He took on the block of the right tackle, crossed and forced him back to the outside, and made, got into the tackle. Great play by Gerald Williams, number 47. Time winding down in this third period, about a minute 43 to go in the third period. Very important drive for Purdue's defense because if Iowa gets out in front 17 to 7, the complexion of the game changes. Second down and about nine. Travis Watkins, the intended receiver, Mark Foster had the coverage. Chuck Hartley, I think, must have some problems with the shoulder. He's not throwing the ball like we've seen him in the past. Difficult pass, though, running to the left, the right-handed thrower running to the left, the ball thrown low and away from Watkins. Seven drop passes, although that's, uh, it's kind of hard to tag a drop on the receiver for that one. That's for sure. Third down and nine. Timeout taken by the Hawkeyes. Minute 39 to go. I believe Hartley was running out of time on the play clock here. He was probably running out of time. He saw the blitz coming up. He wanted to audible. He said, I don't have time to audible. Let's call a timeout. Let's not make any mistakes when we're in this portion of the field. He saw Hartley's numbers for the third period. Not very impressive and not the kind of numbers that are indicative of the quality quarterback that Chuck Hartley is. And as we mentioned, Jim Grabowski, uh, during one of the timeouts, we saw 
Head coach Hayden Fry talking with uh, Hartley, been asking him about the sidearm motion and why he's coming sidearm and throwing off balance a little bit. And I'm not sure if we couldn't quite hear if Chuck said there was a problem with his shoulder, but certainly there's a mechanical problem. If it's a result of an injury, we're not sure. We don't know if he has a problem with his shoulder. But mechanically, he's not throwing the football the way a quarterback should. Football is a game of habits. You have good habits, things work out right. Sometimes you slip into the bad habits. And that may be what's happening to Hartley. He's got the habit of doing a lot of sidearm motion, and he's doing it when he doesn't need to throw a sidearm pass. Purdue wants a timeout. And the uh, sideline, the defensive people uh, uh, want a timeout for Purdue. Phil Bennett on the sidelines as Iowa approached the line of scrimmage, called for a timeout. He wants his whole unit over it to the sidelines. There's Fred Akers. Well, I think what happened, Wayne, is that Iowa came in with two tight ends. Phil Bennett, defensive court. Have, I believe, a red type of, uh, uh, some kind of a red, maybe bow or ribbon on the back of their helmets. Maybe we'll get a shot of it later. I hope it's a piece of tape, not a bow. Yeah, right. I know something about putting a bow on a helmet. Ninth play of the Iowa drive. Third down and nine. Here we go. Hartley. What a catch. Touchdown. Devin Harburg. Oh, that was a great catch by Harburg. He was covered by Derek Kelson, and the ball was really underthrown. You'll see it now. Hartley just dropping back, lofting the ball up high. Now watch this grab. The ball is underthrown. Harburg sees it. Kelson does not one-handed. Look at that grab for the touchdown. He never got his second hand until he was in the end zone on the ground. What a grab. Gillett for the point after. with a minute 34 to go in the game have changed the complexion of the game. Minute this, 34 to go in the third. This catch deserves another look. Again, the ball slightly underthrown. Harbert has his eye on it. Now you'll see that Kelson does not. You can't see, he's looking back for it. He lost That's, it. Yep, the advantage of the receiver. You know, you can turn, you turn back. Now look at the grab. Right in the head. And, and you know, it's kind of like he was on a roller coaster, you know, where you don't hang on. He, he was about to bring the other hand over to wrap it up, and it kind of said, nah, it's hard to catch it one hand. See? Look how uh, one hand. Devin Harper. He's had quite a day. Yeah, he's got your snack here. That's a great catch. <laughs> That's a great catch, and you're so right. That was an understatement. Happy young man, Devin Harbert. Iowa leading by 10 now. Still a minute 34 to go in the third period. Jeff Gillett ready to restart the game. When safety dropping back deep for the Purdue Boilermakers. Wait, now, for the Boilermakers, it's no time to panic. They have not moved the ball very successfully, but still, with a minute 34 to go in this third quarter, you still got to stay with your game plan. You got plenty of time. Manus and Graham are back deep. Would be a lot closer if they would have kicked the field goal, though, wouldn't they? Yeah. Skillet trying to deny any kind of a real return here. Graham picks up. A couple of moves gets out across the 20 to the 22 yard line. James Pipkins and John Derby on the tackle, and Graham getting up a little slowly. He's all right. I'll tell you what, the uh, the receiving core is uh, talking about that one. <laughs> there he is. Yeah, you see, you see that ball was dropping out of the heavens, and uh, and I figured, well, one hand. I mean, why not? I do that every day. Why not increase the odds a little bit? From the 22, first down for the Boilermakers. Ooh, Grunmeyer was erased by Riley. Oh, great sound work, too. You could feel that. You could hear the hit by Jim Riley. Those pads are cracking. Oh. Iowa scoring drive. A well done, nine play, 69 yard work. Hartlieb, 11 yards to Harvard. Hartlieb has not made it easy on his receivers with the kind of passes he's been throwing here today. He's been struggling. Second and nine. Fox looks 
with a sidearm to Shrum Meyer out to the 29, maybe the 30-yard line. Mike Burke was there. And Riley also in on that stop. 0 for 10 on third down to the Boilermakers. Fox on the roll. First down across the 40-yard line by Calvin Williams. Keaton Smiley gave the cushion on the near side a 12-yard pickup. Really? For next fullback, yeah. Graham, good cutback move. And not bad power on the end of that run. Brian Wise made the tackle. Gained a five. I thought there was a lot more there than that. Third period has wound to a close. Coming up, the final 15 minutes of play here in West Lafayette. We'll return to Ross Aid Stadium after this from your local station. No, we're not in Nashua, New Hampshire, but these colors are in West Lafayette, Indiana. Beautiful fall afternoon for Big Ten football. And the Boilermakers out a second down, about five yards to go at the Purdue 45 yard line. First down. Inside the Hawkeye 30 to the 27-yard line. Brian Wise finally chased him down. Right on his last running play, I thought Ray Graham made one too many cuts. Right to the middle of the line, and Graham able to slither away for 27 yards. First and 10. Drummeyer. Drummeyer won't go down. Oh, you gotta love it, Wayne. Just gotta love it. These Boilermakers hanging in there, hanging in there. Drumwire not known for his running ability, but Iowa thinks they're gonna go back to Graham to give it to the short man. Watch this leg drive. Watch the effort by Drumwire. He's not going down. He's forced out of bounds. Short of the end zone. Drummeyer, this time they would not let go on the tackle attempt, and he ran into a wall of white-clad Hawkeye defenders. Graham lost the handle. Still up for grabs, and the Hawkeyes have it. come up with it. Mike Burke on the recovery. Purdue coming back with the option. And I believe it's a bad pitch by Brian Fox. You'll see they ride the fullback in. Fox keeps it, makes the pitch. Hits, Fo hits Graham right on the shoulder pad. Certainly was catchable. I think Graham may have taken his eyes off. I think so. The ball. It looked like a, you know, a fieldable play. And a tough break for the Boilermakers. They were threatening the score. Iowa takes over with 13.43 to go on the game. Hawkeyes leading by 10. Hartley to Falloon. And it is a catch to the 28-yard line. Steve Jackson over the near side. Forced him out of play. I believe he's two yards short of the first down as they mark it to the 28. Well, he's about a yard short of the first down. Give him a gain of nine. Iowa defensive huddle. Yeah. Come out of the drive block. I tried to make a guy for it. And they turned him to one. And they came back and I fucking drove for it. I came out here fine. I came out there and I just. Okay, you went to three bonus. Second down at about a yard to go. Tony Stewart. First down, into the clear, to the 50, to the 40, to foot race, to the 20. Mark Foster angles him out of bounds. Near the 12-yard line of Purdue. What a turnaround, Jim Grabowski, in a matter of 30 seconds. 61-yard run. You're going to see a fine effort this time by Tony Stewart, 21. Looks like he should be nailed right there. Bounces off two tackles. Now it's a foot race. It's Mark Foster against Tony Stewart. Mark Foster, the free safety, is gaining on him. 
just managed to shove him out of bounds, but fine run by Tony Stewart. What a turnaround. Moments ago, Purdue was first and goal from the Iowa 6. Now the Hawkeyes are first and 10 from the Purdue 12. Saunders cut it back into traffic, and the man who met him on the play was Bill Hitchcock. Also in on that stop, Mark Foster. Gain of two yards. Second down this afternoon. Saunders. That's it. Touchdown. Richard Bass. Not Saunders on the carry. Nine-yard touchdown run. Purdue coaches were concerned about the tackling by the Boilermakers. You'll see one missed tackle right there. And another one right there. But that one was too late anyway. Would have been a touchdown. Richard Bass. opened up some distance 1247 left to go will return after these words from your local stations I had uh, 32 instead of 23 <laughs> that call but Bass made it look easy on that move up toward the middle and Iowa's blown the game open to the offensive unit there is Richard Bass drink for everybody 1247 left to go I said about three minutes ago that Purdue does not have to panic. They can still stay with their game plan. There was a minute 31 seconds left in the third quarter. Now with 12 minutes and 47 seconds left to go in the fourth quarter, it's time to start panicking. It's time for Purdue to start putting the ball in the air. They're going to have to get Skillet on the kickoff. This is Graham to the 10 at the 20. Out across the 30, maybe to the 31-yard line, depending on the spot of the ball. Brian Wise made the tackle. Tyrone Berry was also there. 26-yard return and a first and 10 coming up. Coming up. Box. Drilled it into O'Connor out near the 40-yard line. About a yard short of the first down. Riley and Foster were there. First down out to the 42 yard line. Mid comfortable margin. Box on first down. Again, got the tight end of Connor over the middle. Connor made the catch near the four. Melvin Foster was there for. Off the mark on that attempt for Ray Graham. On third down to the Vodemakers. Ball was tipped in the middle of the line and fell short of the intended receiver, Shrubmeyer. Dave Hayton may have gotten a piece of the football. You'll see it right here. See who gets a piece of it. I believe like that's Dave Hayton right in the middle. Dave Hayton got a piece of it. And, and you see the official <laughs> ducking, make sure he's not part of the action. The bunt by McCarthy takes the Boilermaker hop inside the Iowa 20. The Hawkeyes will start near their 18-yard line. 33-yard punt, no return. 10:57 left to be played in the ball game. The Iowa Hawkeyes with a comfortable lead over the Boilermakers. Iowa takes over near the Hawkeye 18-yard line, first and 10. Leaf got fast wide open and it went right through his hand. I don't know. Some Tony Stewart got what he could out of that about five yards. Keaton smiled on the tackle for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Right, Here's the play that turned makers. the game around so far, Wayne. The catch by Harbert right now. And there's some discussion with the people in the truck whether this was 
a reception. Let's take a look at it right here. He grabs it one hand. Now, does he have control of it as he hits the ground? Does he or does he not? Look at it. I don't know. Hartley's pass on the near side as we're back live. Incomplete at Jennifer Watkins. And here's the second play that really turned the game around. Great effort by Tony Stewart. The long run that set up the third touchdown by the Iowa Hawkeyes. You'll see Foster in pursuit, catching up. I, you know, you saw Stewart tighten up a little bit as the, the runs get longer and longer. Those are the two plays that have turned this game around. Adams just did get that fun away. Foster on the return. Not much there. 37-yard punt, 5-yard return. First and 10 coming up now for the Boilermakers. Across. Purdue has not been able to make a cash in on better field position in this second half. Brian Fox to the air. That pass nearly intercepted at of Calvin Williams. Greg Brown got a paw on it. Couldn't haul it in. Well, Williams had an opening that Fox just over. Fox. Over the top. Pass intended, I believe, for McManus down the sideline. Smiley had the coverage in the Iowa secondary. Unable to hang on is Lance Jibe, and it is a fourth down for Purdue. Keaton Smiley had the cover. Shot block, offense declined. That means Purdue, Purdue on fourth down to be. John McCarthy. Kind of a line drive kick. Marciano on the run. Runs into traffic on a spin move across the 25. It's a first and 10 coming up. 32 yard punt, four yard return. Andy Gasparro downfield first for the Boilermakers on the tackle. We'll be back after the defensively. They have not allowed Purdue uh, to really move well. One drive deep into Iowa territory. Purdue lost it on a turnover. Devin Harbert for a first down over the middle. Out across the 40 to the 43-yard line. Derek Kelson had the coverage and the tackle. Iowa allowed one penetration deep into Hawkeye territory to the six-yard line. And Purdue, two plays later, lost the football on a turnover. Fine protection that time by Chuck Hartley. He had great throwing lanes. He could view the balloon on the bottom. Nothing there for Saunders. Mike Saunders, the ball carrier. Second and 12. Hartley had it knocked down. The second deflection we have seen here in the last two Iowa drives. The helmet, yeah. We talk about a sidearm pass. Third down and 12. Hartley going for it all to Watkins. To the 20. To the 10. First and goal at the seven yard line. Travis Watkins brought down by Mark Foster on a touchdown saving tackle after a 52 yard gain. Once again, Purdue comes with the blitz. You'll see the three inside guys coming on the blitz one on one. That's Mark Foster, Purdue's best against Travis Watkins. He beats him on the corner move. Well thrown football that time by Hartley. And that's Foster reacting back to make the tackle, but it was a great throw. And a good grab by Travis Watkins. There you'll see the reception once again. Watkins just flat beat Mark Foster. First and goal, Iowa at the seven-yard line. Hartley on the roll. Oh, he had Bell open at the goal line. Couldn't get it there. Oh, he sure did. That bootleg action really froze the Purdue Boilermakers. Nick Bell open along the goal line. Well, Second down and goal to go. Hartley. Intercepted on the play by the Boilermakers. They come all the way. This is Ronnie Beeks. To the 50. To the 40. And he's angled out of bounds. Near the Hawkeye 40 yard line. Hartley, the quarterback, takes him down. Ronnie Beek's man is the tight end. I think what happened is 
it's a tight end, stayed in the block. Beeks dropped off the center field, read the drop in the eyes of the quarterback, got in there and picked it off. Holding the call, there was a flag down. We didn't see it. It was way back at the 10-yard line. Holding the call against Iowa declined. Watch, watch it again. This watch Beeks on the right yards. side of your screen. He's got the tight end. He reads the quarterback, comes to center field, picks it off. Now it's a foot race. And you can see Beeks running for all he's worth and Hartley coming in to make the tackle. Now watch Hartley dropping back to bat. He's going for a slant in pattern. He's looking all the way. He should have looked off the receiver, but Beeks read the eyes of Chuck Hartley and made that great interception. And 60-some yards later, the Boilermakers are at the line of the Hawkeyes, first and ten. Fox slipped and fell. He just tripped himself. He stumbled on the uh, deep drop. Possession of the ball inside. This is the fourth time Purdue has taken the ball inside Iowa territory. Let's see if we can see what forces. Is it scale? Oh, yes. Yep. Scales still was there. I didn't really see it initially that Scales uh, tripped him up. Loss of 10, second and 20. Scales in motion. Feet. First down and more. I'll tell you, just great running by Ernie Schremmeyer. Great knack that he can read those blocks and make the cuts off of the block. This is a screen plan. You see 34 going out to the flat area. Ball into his hands. Now watch the move here. Back to the outside. Now look at the cuts back here. Upside. Back inside here. Good determination by Ernie Schremmeyer. 28-yard gain in the last five yards. He carried a defender with him. First and 10 for the 22. Fox coming back across the grain. Scales could not hang on. Oh, did they have it set up? Drummeyer was hammered but hung on. Melvin Foster made the stop, and he really paid the price for just a two-yard gain. Great concentration by Strumreyer. Fox was hit by Joe Mott as he let it go. Guess who? Number 97 in the face of Brian Fox once again. Who going for it on fourth and eight? from the 20 of Iowa. Fox, oh, Mott one-on-one -on -one with Fox. And finally, Joe Mott gets his man. Back outside the 25. Once again, Joe Mott came. No one out in front to block for Brian Fox. Let's take a look. Backfield going to the left. You, you can see that Brian Fox looked like he wanted a fake. Maybe the secondary, I mean, the backfield went the wrong way. Maybe Fox went the wrong way. But anyway, Brian Fox paid the price for it. Timeout taken on the field. We've got a break. 33 left to go, and Iowa takes over on downs. First and 10. Of the Hawkeye 28. Hart lead to the air. Going deep for Watson. Oh! Almost a great catch by Watkins. He couldn't quite hang on. Double coverage. He had Jackson and Foster with him at the 35-yard line. He tries to do the unexpected. Well, they're leading 24 to 7, and second and 10 now for Iowa. I would think they just try to kill the clock. John Smith in motion. Here's the running play we expected. Well, this may get him more than Honey Passwood. Breaking far ahead of the field, going all the way for the touchdown. Mike Saunders. 73 yards. Tell me, what's running up the score? To throw for it or to run 73 yards? My goodness, that is a great play by Saunders who broke into the clear. 
Wayne, you're going to see Purdue in man-to-man -man coverage. The out, you'll see no secondary coverage in deep center field here. Once he breaks through the line, he gets by Foster. It's a foot race with Beeks. He's got him beat. Now it's all she wrote. Saunders all the way for a touchdown. And that's part of the weakness, one of the weaknesses of man-to-man -man coverage. You don't have, if you can spread your guys out, you don't have anybody in the secondary to stop you once you break through the line of scrimmage. Gillett's point after is good. 5-14 left to be played. It is Iowa, impressively now, 31-7 over Purdue. Hey, Mom, hi, Dad, I love you. Run up the score. What are you trying to do? So they keep it on the ground and they bust one up the middle for 73 yards and thereabouts and a touchdown and a fine run on the play by uh, Saunders, Mike Saunders, the freshman running back. Hayden Fry was just setting up that uh, long run yeah. with a deep uh, threat at, at a pass. We're sorry, Hayden. We didn't mean to imply you were running up the score. <laughs> Here's a kick by Skillet. Deep drive, and McManus about a yard into the end zone. To the 10, to the 20. Curtis McManus out across the 25. Tyrone Berry made the stop for Iowa. See, when you start accusing him, you know, why throw the ball to this juncture, and then they break a run like that. Pull him away from Boston College. There for the tail. Second and nine. Ryan Fox looking downfield. Hit it to Miles, the swing man, short of the first down, but across the 30 to the 33 yard line. Philip Bradley made the stop on the play. Third down and four from the 33 of Purdue. Hit as he releases, and the ball swept by the receiver, Kelly Turner, near the 40-yard line. Oh, Rod Davis up the middle. That is the fifth drop pass by the Boilermakers. It is a fourth down for Purdue. Talking. That's a layman talking right there. Marciano will try it. Oh, they got the wall set up. One man to beat. There's a flag down. McCarthy, the punter, made the tackle, but a penalty marker down way back inside the Iowa 20. 50-yard punt return. I believe they're going to call it back. You could see McCarthy kind of getting his feet set. He knew I'm the only. Tom Pahalski in a quarterback, and Saunders gets the call up the middle for about two yards. Man. Here's the toss again on the run. Saunders out across five yards to go from the Hawkeye 14. Tom Pahalski, quarterback. Diving attempt made. It's incomplete. Falloon, the intended receiver on the near side. Steve Jackson had the coverage. Coming up next week, we will be... Adams shanks it. Ball gets a Purdue bounce, and Brian Wise makes the pickup for the Hawkeyes. First down for the Boilermakers near the 33-yard line in Iowa Terrace, but it also took him out of the punting picture. He may be back in next week. I don't know. From the 33, first down. Scott Bell on a quarterback. Scott Bell, a rude awakening. Over to make the tackle of Mike Bowersides, the freshman out of Cedar Rapids, Iowa, Prairie High School. Redshirt freshman. Second and about 17, a little bit more than 17 yards to go. Bell on the give to Ray Graham. Oh, he hits that hole well, doesn't he? He's going to be an exciting runner, just a young freshman. Yeah. Outside the 30, near the 35. You know, Blitzer gets a fourth down. Boilermakers going for it. Bell on the run. Pass 
gets overthrown and complete, and the Hawkeyes will take over on downs. Four seconds left to be played. Time for one. It's at five starts in Iowa territory today, but just one touchdown on the board. Final play of the game. 